among the many works of art which Napoleon brought from all over Europe to the Louvre in Paris was a large altarpiece by the early Renaissance painter Andrea Mantegna. Only the original central scene of the predella, which formed the base of the altarpiece, remains in the museum's collection. The subject of this comparatively small wooden panel is the crucifixion. Despite its modest size, it's one of the grandest crucifixions in Italian art. Mantegna, who was born near Padua, painted it between 1456 and 1459, when he was in his mid-twenties. The cross, which bears the dead Christ, forms the central axis of the painting. It stands in a splintered, rocky landscape, surrounded by groups of figures which appear to have also been turned to stone by the tragic impact of the event. Here, in the center ground of the painting, witnesses returning from the spectacle are climbing the steep road which curves towards the city of Jerusalem, towering on its nearby hill, overshadowed by a giant crag. The rocky platform in the foreground is deeply incised with grass-grown crevices, holes into which posts can be driven and a litter of human bones identify this gruesome spot as a place of execution, Golgotha, place of a skull. To the right hangs the tortured body of the unredeemed thief, in front of a naked rock face on which all vegetation has withered. At the foot of this cross, callously indifferent to what has taken place, the remainder of the execution party are casting lots for Christ's robe. Juxtaposed to the soldiers and pulled back from the cross of Christ, a group of weeping women are huddled around the figure of Mary, who has collapsed in the arms of two of them. Here, with an expression which contrasts the agonized grimace of the other condemned man, hangs the redeemed thief in front of the crowded city of Jerusalem. He seems to indicate the promise of ultimate redemption for all true believers. Beneath this cross, the anguished figure of John gazes at the dead Christ. His gesture of desperation is made all the more expressive by its restraint. The central crucifix stands in isolation, the body of Christ fully silhouetted against the sky. It divides the painting in terms of theme and composition. The left-hand side depicts life in all its pain and ultimate joy, and the right, a world which has fallen into corruption, indifference, war, and death. At the same time, the cross unites these tragically contrasting aspects and stands there as a universal symbol, eternal as the rocks. The colors of the painting have an enameled brilliance. The desolation of the scene is intensified by a bright, clear light, uncompromisingly exposing each minute detail, held together by a tight, linear web of calculated composition. If we follow the eyes of John the Baptist, the rider with his back to us on the right, and the soldier behind the group of women, they intersect at the point where the cross piece meets the upright of the cross, their gazes fixed on the face of Christ. Looking from the right-hand corner of the painting, however, the position of the horses, one behind the other, and the deep clefts in the rock help to create an effect of steep perspective, leading the eye back towards the city of Jerusalem. Yet the focal point of the painting is neither centered on the face of Christ, nor is it in the background. The center stage is right at the front. It is delineated by the arrangement of the three crosses, that of Christ making its rear boundary and the crosses of the thieves its side walls. The platform of rock is cut into steps at the front, forming a partly hidden foreground from which two soldiers emerge, cut by the frame. In Mantegna's masterly composition, this space is surrounded and defined by the complex groups of figures, but it remains tellingly empty. Viewed on its own, the painting is tremendously impressive, but it should also be seen in the context of the complete altarpiece. The other two panels, which make up the predella, 
depicting Christ and the sleeping disciples on the Mount of Olives, set in the same landscape of red rocks, and the resurrection share the dramatic and poetic expression of the crucifixion. The large picture of the altarpiece is, however, strictly classical and objective in its treatment. It is composed of three panels separated by columns which form one side of a square loggia. Enthroned in the center of this richly decorated, ideal classical temple are the Madonna and Child. They are surrounded by putti, singing and strumming on lutes, whilst saints from various ages are assembled in the side panels. The spatial concept of the three crosses in the predella echoes the arrangement of these three panels. The empty stage, formed by the crosses, is in marked contrast to the crowded stage of this stately and festive scene with its holy group. Mantegna was one of the first artists to establish this theme of the Sacra Conversazione, a composition of Madonna and Child surrounded by saints and angels in the painting of northern Italy. Here we see the complete altarpiece. It was commissioned by Gregorio Carrera, abbot of San Zeno in Verona, in 1456, and was installed in the church three years later. Napoleon had the altarpiece taken to the Louvre in 1797, and when it was returned to Verona by the Commission of 1815, the three predella panels remained in France, the crucifixion in possession of the Louvre and the others at the Museum of Tours. They were replaced in the Church of San Zeno by copies. This monumental altarpiece is one of Mantegna's greatest works. It was whilst engaged on it that he was appointed court painter to the Gonzagas in Mantua, in whose service he was to remain comfortably for the rest of his life, eventually rising to the rank of knighthood. Few painters are blessed with such good fortune. Of very humble origin, Mantegna was adopted and tutored by the Paduan Squaccioni, with whom he later severed ties over his marriage to the daughter of his rival, Jacopo Bellini. This marriage made Mantegna a member of the most renowned family of Venetian artists and he was later to have a considerable artistic influence on his brother-in-law, Giovanni Bellini. Mantegna was the first northern Italian painter to combine the new elements of Tuscan and Venetian art with the Gothic style of his native north, and these influences are evident in his work. He was one of the first artists of his time to be directly inspired by the classical relics of Italy and Greece. Indeed, he's been called the antiquarian of the Quattrocento, and the dream of antiquity is his ideal form. His passion for the classical is clear in this altarpiece. It demonstrates the incisive accuracy of his draftsmanship, with its masterful handling of the rules of perspective, the sculptural modeling of his figures, and the clarity and brilliance of his palette. We know Mantegna to have been a difficult and domineering character, and yet there is a resonant note of humanity and compassion in his work. Where the large panels of this altarpiece give scope for his great craftsmanship, his imagination ranges freely in passionate and poetic expression in the predellas. His paintings stimulated the imagination of his contemporaries, and his engravings spread his influence throughout northern Italy and beyond. Northern European painters, in particular Dürer and Poussin, owed much to Mantegna and discovered Italian antiquity and the Renaissance through him. Indeed, when he died in 1506, Dürer was on his way to visit him. Unquestionably, Mantegna's world of color and composition had a profound and lasting effect on European painting.